welcome once again to church. Once again, it's such a great honor and a privilege for me to bring the word to you today. So right there where you are, I pray that the Holy Ghost will minister to you today. Because the thing is, when it comes to the word of God, we know that the word of God is truth, it is spirit, and it is life. So hope will penetrate you today as you listen to the Word and the Holy Spirit ministers to your heart. Well, this month we are talking about the church. And if you joined in last week, you'll remember what we've been talking about, the four fishermen called as disciples by Jesus. And then I've been talking about when I was a child, I remember at school when there was someone that called out, Hey, we're going to be playing soccer! Who wants to come and play footy? There's a whole bunch of kids that would just rush over there. Miraculously, two captains would be elected, and each captain will then select from all of those kids that volunteered to come and play. They would pick from them their own team. And remember, I said, I always used to put my hand up saying, Pick me, pick me! I am your man! because I always believed that everyone needed me on their team. But you know what? A lot of times those captains would elect and select and pick the members of their team according to their ability. And the ones that lack ability, they left them on the sideline. So a lot of them found themselves on the sideline not making the team. And then connected that to Jesus in this part of Scripture in Luke 5, how Jesus was picking his team. And Jesus never put a number on anyone, even on you and myself, because we always make the perfect score. You know, so the thing is, when we are picked on the team to be team players on Jesus' team, He always put the perfect score of a 10 on you and on me. Praise God. How awesome is that to know? Well, friends, and then we've seen how it was that Jesus had been walking on that shore on that day of Gennesaret, and he saw Peter's boat, and he just got into it while Peter was out cleaning his nets. (laughs) And when Peter came back, From cleaning his nets, he saw this man in his boat. Now, we spoke about how that really is strange. It's the same way when you would be walking out into a car park and just get into someone's car. And they're coming by and asking, excuse me, uh, what are you doing in my car? Now, was it that Jesus needed Peter's boat? There was two boats on the shore that day in the water. Now the thing is, Jesus didn't need that boat. Jesus wasn't forced to pick Peter to be on his team. And we can think of a lot of reasons why Peter should not have been on the team. You know? And that's how we sometimes, and how easily we can disqualify, not others, but even ourselves but with Jesus there's no respecter of person he loves us with such an amazing love and the thing is we always come out as a perfect score a perfect 10 to Jesus because he made you the boat that Peter had the cedar that that was made from Jesus was the one who created it. Jesus created the water that the boat was in. Jesus created you. He created me. And the thing is, Jesus was picking. He was picking people to be part of his team. And what is the name of his team? It's the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for the church. And Jesus said that he is the one building his church. And that's 
to be found in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Jesus said that he's the one building his church. Now friends, there was another boat that day. And I just want to pick this up again. Luke chapter 5. And let's go to verse 4. Number four. And when Jesus stopped speaking, that's after he got into the boat, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now listen to this. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and we caught nothing. Now this is a professional fisherman at word here. This was Peter's profession. He toiled all night and caught nothing. You know, it's not as if anyone could come and tell a professional what to do. Like he's been doing this day in and day out. He knew these waters. He, he fished these waters every day of his life for such a long period of time. That was the source of his income, his bread and his butter. And the thing is, Jesus said to him to put his nets out. And what is it that Jesus is saying to you right now? How, have, have you become numb, perhaps, to the prompting of the Spirit of God, to the words of Jesus? Have you become numb to it because of all your toil? We need to come to a place where we listen. Come to that place of quietness where you can quiet yourself down and quiet down all the other voices that is speaking and yelling out and calling out for your attention and pay attention to what it is that he is saying because Jesus, everything he does is on purpose. And the thing is, he wants you on his team. And the thing is, we will see in a minute what Jesus' plan was with the other boat. It was not that he didn't pick the other boat, that he only picked Peter's boat. But Peter toiled all night and said, we fished all night and we, we caught nothing. But listen to this. I love his response and his reply. Nevertheless, at your word, so at Jesus' word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, so there was an act of obedience and surrender, regardless of his opinion and his stance or his view or his perspective. But he said, nevertheless, at your word, I'll let the net down. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. <laughs> Whoa. So they signaled to the partners in the other boat to come and help them. Now look at this. Jesus is among Simon, James and John, signaling to the other boat. And Jesus is among them and saying, Hoy, we need your help. Come over here. Come and help us. Come and join. Come and deal. So the other guys in the other boat rushed over there. Let's hear. Let's hear what the word of God is saying. When Simon, Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Peter recognized Jesus as the captain of the ship. Friends, Jesus wasn't forced to pick Peter. He wanted Peter. And it's the same with those boys on the other boat. 
He wanted them. He signaled out to them and said, come on over here. Come on. You are part of the team. Come on. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's urging you on to say, he's saying, come on. And what is it that was on display here? The Pharisees and the Sadducees always asked Jesus for everything that he had done. On whose authority are you doing this? You see, Jesus was illustrating the kingdom of God right there in front of them. And friends, Peter come to the come to the conclusion that he needed Jesus on his boat. His boat represented his life. And it's the same with us. We need Jesus as the captain of our boat. And what is a captain there for, essentially? Well, we follow the directive of the captain. We put our trust in the captain. The captain is the one that leads and we follow. So Jesus, we need to have Jesus as the captain of our ship. <laughs> and just look at where he's leading has led. He'd led to such a marvelous catch. And everyone was having a good day. Praise God. Praise God. It is so wonderful. It is so wonderful. And Peter humbled himself as he fell at the knees of Jesus Christ, our Lord and the head of all. He's the head of the church. He's the head of the body. And we have been called to fulfill a role within the purpose of the church. Jesus wants you to be on his team. And you know what? We don't just come to church. We are the church. The church is built not with bricks and with tin and with metal, with lighting on the inside. No, it is built with living stones, which is us. It's built out of us, living vessels that God purposefully had made to fulfill a purpose that he had purposed within his heart. We are called according to his will. In Proverbs, there is a scripture, there's a part in, in, in Proverbs that says <laughs> that many are the plans in a man's heart but the Lord's purpose prevails over them all. Friends, it might be time to just put it in the right perspective. Perhaps it's just come time right now to lay hold of what exactly that purpose and that plan is. Now I want you to come with me to the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew and verse 18. We shall read verse 18. Oh, hang on. Let us, let us start a, li a little bit earlier than that. Let's start at verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So he said to them, but who do you say that I am? So Jesus is now asking his disciples, who do you guys say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock 
I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now listen to this. Listen to the very next verse. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now thinking about what happened here on the boat when they signal out to their friends to come and help them with the catch. You see, because Jesus knows where the catch is. Jesus had demonstrated and illustrated the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And remember, we spoke about the purpose of Jesus is to collaborate. So the maker collaborating with his creation. So it's heaven partnering with earth. And Jesus wants to partner with you, my friend. He wants to partner with you. And look at what he said. He said that I have given you the keys of the kingdom. Now, listen to this. If he said he has given us the keys to the kingdom, it puts it in a complete different perspective. Because if I say I give you the keys to my house, it means that you have the key to unlock the front door and the only access you have is to the foyer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jesus has taken the limits off. He has given us access to it all. And that's why he is so excited. He is so excited to partner with us. Because there's no restriction. He's given us the keys. It's plural. Keys of the kingdom. So it means that every single door to the point of supply, he is given to us. And what does a key do, friend? It unlocks and unveils what is behind that door. So we are not restricted. We are not restricted. The kingdom of God is also an entering kingdom. The kingdom will enter with his dominion where it is welcomed. We ought to welcome that. We ought to welcome Jesus on our boat. We ought to welcome him as the captain of our ship. And let his purpose prevail over all of our plans. Because our plans will just bring us to that place where we, the same as Peter, had been toiled, been toiling all night and all day and all of our life. Whoa! But the purpose of God. We have the authority to welcome you to the kingdom and to welcome the kingdom to you. Praise God. This is so amazing. This is so amazing. Everywhere I go, I take the kingdom with me. Friends, don't wait till heaven. Don't wait until we get to heaven to exercise our authority. It is to be illustrated in the same way that Jesus has done it. And you know what? The purpose that God has in calling you to be part of his team, it's so accommodating for everyone else as well. Just think about that. There's so many that you can harness as well and bring in and call in. Partnering with the Holy Ghost, partnering with heaven, bringing them in by illustrating the kingdom of God. That's his heart. That's the purpose of God. That's the purpose and the plan that he has for you and for me. Collaborating. Heaven collaborating and partnering with earth. With you. I'm talking about you. 
Jesus picked you to be part of his team. Not because he had to, or because he had to, but because he wants to, because he loves you. Let us be the ones signaling together with Jesus to say, come. Come and deal with this abundance. Just come and have a look. Because you have never seen nothing like it. It has changed those boys' lives forever. Little that they know that when they step of that ship, that they would see blind eyes open, deaf ears opened, the lame walking, the dumb talking, even the dead raised back to life again. So friends, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to take joy in the purpose of God. Because you might have toiled and you might have wrestled with, well, why am I here? What purpose is there for me to fulfill in this life? You might feel that you are worn out. You might feel that you have come to the end of what seems to be a dream. But God, but God has. God has. He says that I know the plans I have for you. It is a plan to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. <laughs> that is good news. We ought to be so delighted and happy and filled with joy at the word of God. Because that is where we find the whole plan plotted out for us. And we need to surrender. We need to take our captain at his word. We need to put our trust in the captain whose name is Jesus if we're going to have any direction in our lives. So friends, God bless you. Thank you for joining in today. If this word administered to you, that is the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He's right there with you. And if you have never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, what that means is, is that if you have never made a decision to make Jesus the captain of your ship, the Word of God teaches us that if we believe in our heart that Jesus is the Son of the living God and that He laid down His life on that cross of Calvary so that you will not perish, but so that you can have everlasting life. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that He had been raised out of the grave to life, then you are saved. And friends, we, if we only serve Jesus as Savior, we are going to miss him as Lord. So if you pray that prayer right there where you are and you believe that in your heart, then you have been what we call born again. And then I want to welcome you within the team of Jesus. You are now part of the church and the body of Christ, hallelujah, and the family of God. Bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your week. Until we meet again, bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here at Life Impact Church Mackay. We pray these messages have been inspiring and impacting. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, 
or you would like to connect and be a part of our Life Impact Church family, we want to hear from you. We'd love for you to make contact with us. Our details are on the screen for you now. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel where our weekly messages will be uploaded. We are also on Facebook and Instagram. But once everything goes back to normal, we would love to also meet with you. So we just encourage you in this season to press in and to lean in with all that God has for you right now. So let's stay connected and let's be in touch. God bless.